just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you'll live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him. And when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Luke 10, 25 to 37. An interesting phenomenon occurs whenever I try to set boundaries with my daughter. She tries to negotiate how much farther she can go. If I tell her she can't drink after 8 p.m., she'll say, well, can I have a popsicle? Or if I tell her she can't watch a movie right now because you know it's too late in the evening, she'll ask, well, what about one cartoon? She's not unlike any other human being. We're always testing our boundaries. It's been happening since the Garden of Eden. We always want to know how far we can go and still get away with doing it. We rationalize our actions and we come up with reasons for doing what we want to do. Reasons we have convinced ourselves are valid. By now you're probably familiar with what othering is, but I want you to understand why it's so easy to do. Othering involves validating our interactions with people outside of our social identities based on what we believe about them. We actually rationalize the awful ways we treat people, and we have to do that or else we'll think of ourselves as awful. If we can find a reason to do less by people, we will. That's how othering works. It's something that we often do without even realizing. I guess you could call it a feature of our sinfulness or our depravity. There's no reason to be inhumane to others. And so we make up reasons. There's a story in Luke in which we see an example of this very tendency. A lawyer stands up to test Jesus. Let's assume this guy is really astute and pretty good at arguing. At least we know he likes to argue because he's expressly looking for an argument with Jesus here. He wants to know how to inherit eternal life, or rather, he wants Jesus to tell him how it's done. Being a lawyer, Jesus has him recite the law. Love God, love your neighbor. Not entirely satisfied with that answer, he then asks Jesus, well, who is my neighbor? He's trying to justify himself. He's testing those limits. He's trying to find a way out of doing what's required of him. So Jesus tells him a parable in which the other, a Samaritan, is actually the hero. Sit with that for a moment. The hero of the story is not a fellow Jew like the lawyer. It's the unclean, foreign, strange other. To the Jews, Samaritans were the other. They weren't one of them. They were a mongrel, anathema, even though they had a lot in common, namely a shared genetic and religious ancestry, they didn't have enough in common. Whatever the Samaritans were, they weren't Jews. That alone is enough to other them. And Jesus invites this lawyer to go ahead and admit that the hero is in fact the other. But he doesn't just stop there. He then says to the lawyer, 
go and do likewise. In other words, be like the other to this lawyer. That must have added insult to injury. If we want to find justification for our othering, we probably shouldn't look to scripture because we won't find it. Even the law that was so intently studied by this lawyer commands that the stranger is to be treated and loved as one's own self. Our faith calls us to be better than our tendencies.